kidding. <laughs> and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to take you through how I made this Starlight Dawn of the Seven Body Suit from Amazon Prime's The Boys. So originally I started watching The Boys when a friend of mine recommended it to me because he said that I reminded him of Aaron Moriarty who plays Annie January aka Starlight. And the more and more I watched I decided that I absolutely had to cosplay Starlight. So I'll take you guys through the whole process of how I made the bodysuit, the belt, the boots, and then I just bought the gloves on Amazon, but I'll show you those too. Okay, without further ado, here we go. So I used three different fabrics for the suit here. This is the fabric that is on her bodysuit. It's screen printed and it's stretchy. I got it from a company called Parallel Life Studios and I will link their socials or their website in the description below. But here is a closer look. So as you can see, it is pretty thin and like you can see through it. You can see my hand pretty well. So I did line it. It's just lined with a white athletic like spandex lycra fabric. You can get it at any fabric store, I'm sure, or online. And that's what I used for the base of it. And then all of these shiny bits here, the panels on the sides and this part in the collar are this fabric, which I got from Joann's. So I used two different types of bias tape on this as well. So this on the outsides here, down the front and around the butt is one type, I'll link. Um, it's a little bit more yellow of a gold and it has no stretch. So make sure that when you're making it, you go around your back and especially around the butt area that you do a full circumference measure and make sure that you have the right amount of this because it doesn't stretch at all and then it'll be really uncomfortable. And then this is the second type of bias. This one's a little bit more of a brassy gold. It's a lot closer to this color. I think the perfect little something to use here would have been a white and gold striped sweatband, but I couldn't find any of those online. I didn't really look that hard, so maybe they're out there but I just used a bit of white sweatshirt material that I had left over from another project and then put the bias tape on it. So it goes all the way around the suit. I'll show you. Don't mind this, I just was working quickly and couldn't couldn't fit it right. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's all the way around the back. So as far as assembly of this bodysuit, I will show you that in videos because I don't remember off the top of my head. So I started with the pattern that I got on Etsy and modified for this project. I started by cutting it out of muslin fabric to get the pattern I wanted to do before I committed to the white star and white athletic lining fabric. The adjustments I made to the fabric started with the back piece, so I just cut a swooping back with no attachment to the top, just attachments to the side out of the fabric and you'll see it pinned on the mannequin here where the front piece remains the same and the modification for the back was I just cut off the top part. Once I was happy with that, I then committed to cutting it out of the star fabric, which was stressful because I only had two yards to work with. Once I had all those pieces cut out, I layered them two on top of each other and then pinned them down. I'm going to do a stay stitch around the whole thing so I don't get any weird bumps when I sew it together and then try it on. I want everything to be as flat and nice as possible and here is what it looked like at this point, I hadn't yet done anything to the front for the patterning yet, so here I am going in and cutting into the sides to make the shoulders smaller and give it that V like halter top look. And to make sure it's symmetrical on both sides, I just fold it over and cut along the line. The next step is to make a cut for the 16 inch zipper I'm using, so you can see I've marked that out on my little clear measuring thing here and I'm just cutting down the middle of the fabric and I have it marked at the bottom where I want it to end with a pin. The first real assembly step is going to be adding the gold pieces to the side of the zipper. So I patterned this little piece and I'm cutting it out of gold fabric. I'm going to do that for both sides and then sew that onto the edge of where I have my uh, zipper area. So 
So you can see here, I'm just kind of folding over to see how much hangover I want to have and then I'm pinning it down along the edge. So I wanna kind of have that same shape space where I want it to fold over on itself. So it has a little bit of a fold under where the seam's gonna be. So when I sew it down, I'm gonna sew on top so it folds over easily and you don't see that seam on the outside there. So this is what it looked like once it was sewn down. Now the next step is to fold it over and keep it tight. I'm gonna pin it down and then I'm gonna sew a stay stitch down the side before I commit to putting in the zipper. Here's what it looks like after. I have some of the bias tape pinned down where I wanted to see it and the collar's also pinned down. I did sew in the zipper off camera because it took me two attempts to do that. Um, I broke the first zipper and so that was a tragedy, but you guys know how to sew in a zipper. It's pretty self-explanatory. So with the bias tape pinned down the sides where I wanted it to be, I made sure to first undo the side seams so that I could lay everything flat when I'm sewing it down, which is major key because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get my sewing machine under there and you really wouldn't be able to do this process. So it's a lot of assembly and then taking it apart and then reassembling it to make sure everything's in the right spot. Next, I'm making the section that goes under the boobs that kind of looks like a sweatband. I'm just using this old sweatshirt material and pinning it into a one and a half inch tube that goes around the whole center part. Um, and I'm gonna do some stay stitching for that and then sew the other bias tape on there. With the white piece sewn down, I'm going to then pin on two strands of the bias tape and take turns sewing in between so that I make sure each one lays flat. And once I have this piece finished, I'm going to undo the zipper in that area where it fits under the boobs and then I'm going to slide this piece in and then sew down over that and then once I have that placement figured out I'm going to just sew the whole thing down around the edge of the bodysuit. Then here I'm going to be making the collar. It's just two rectangular pieces sewn together with a little curve on two sides and I left the bottom open so that I could flip it inside out. I also can't find any footage of me sewing it onto the bodysuit, so once I flip it inside out, I just sew it down to the inside of the top of the bodysuit. So it just, it's stretchy and will stretch around your neck. One of the final steps is to pattern the two pieces of gold that are at the bottom of the bodysuit by her legs. So I'm just using a piece of muslin to do that and tracing where I want it to be. Once I had that figured out, I cut it out of the same gold fabric that I used for the V by the zipper and I'm just pinning it on. I, I should not have pinned it down this way. I know it was close to the bias tape. I should have done it where I pinned it opposite and folded it over so there wouldn't be white space, um, but it's not super noticeable. Having done it this way, I just don't recommend it. It's not as clean of an edge. And then once you sew this down, the last step that again I did not film because it was stressful was adding the bias tape to the edges of the leg holes and then the edge of the top. To be more screen accurate with the stars, I definitely would have done a mold of clay and then done like a silicone situation because I think that's what hers are as well as the starburst bits on the gloves and the boots which i decided to forego because i just i was losing <laughs> i was losing steam and i wanted to get this done before the last episode of season three came out so i decided to forego those but if i didn't upgrade that's definitely what i would do next okay and next we have her belt which i made out of warbler 
So I'll show you how I did it. I basically just put a piece of muslin fabric on my mannequin and then drafted out the size and shape of the pattern and then, you know, flipped it in half. So I had a mirror image, traced that, cut it out. And then I drew it onto, I drew it onto the warbler and this is melted slash glued together. I used my heat gun for part of it, but that doesn't always create a perfect bond. So some of it is glued together to make sure it stays together. And then I just used a metallic gold spray paint on it. And uh, I did some finishing touches here so you can see a little bit of shadows around the edges she has. Uh, that's just with um, black acrylic paint that I dry brushed on. And the back, <laughs> the back is not beautiful. Hers has like, I think hers closes with um, Velcro but I made mine too short because I was just working with random warbler I had left over under my bed. So um, I had to do hole punches with some string and I couldn't find, I know somewhere in my craft bins, I have gold rope that I was gonna use here, but for the interest of time, I had to use this twine or whatever that is. Um, but that, that can be easily upgraded in the future. Okay, so then the last thing is the boots, which I ordered on Amazon, and I will warn you, they came and they smelled really weird, um, but I think that's just a product of buying $50 platform suede boots on, on Amazon, but I got like a, I got a chestnut color because that was the closest I could find, and then once it got here, I realized it was way too brown, and I used a mix of three different color acrylic paints, specifically fabric acrylics, I would recommend. Um, and I mix those together to be the same color as the gloves. So I did two coats of that paint mixture and then let it dry. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's, you know, it was a lower budget project where I could do this again, I would have used probably a classic suede paint, which would have gone on a little bit better, a little less clumpy, a little less stiff, but it worked for my purposes. So definitely if you're doing this for Halloween or just wanna keep on the budget friendly side, I would use uh, the mixture of acrylic paint that I have included. Okay, well that covers everything from the costume bits. So if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I know I didn't cover makeup or the wig tutorial in this video. So if that's something you'd be interested in seeing, definitely comment down below and I can consider making that. But otherwise, thank you guys again so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks, bye.